Hi everybody, Mrs. Lucas here. Um, here to talk to you about trapezoids and kites. So we are on unit three, target four. We're gonna identify and use properties of trapezoids and kites to solve problems. I thought we'd start with this funny picture that I found uh, a young student was naming her quadrilaterals and named them the names that she wanted to pick rather than rectangle, rhombus, parallelogram, and square. So when we are naming and classifying quadrilaterals today, we want to do it by their formal names. Um, and today we are going to focus on trapezoids and kites. So I want you to go ahead and pause the video and write in the following information so that you can uh, have the vocabulary in your note packet and then I will describe just a couple things here for you. So go ahead and pause the video, write down the vocab. All right, so for the trapezoid, we have exactly one pair of parallel sides. So it's a figure with exactly one pair of parallel sides. Then the isosceles trapezoid has the legs that are congruent. Okay, so congruent legs means that we call the parallel sides the bases, and then the non-parallel sides are the legs. And those sides must be congruent for it to be an isosceles trapezoid. So the upper base angles are congruent. And the upper base angles are just the base angles that are on the top parallel line. And then the lower base angles are also congruent in an isosceles trapezoid only. A kite is a quadrilateral with two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. So opposite sides are not congruent. So to draw a quadrilateral with consecutive congruent sides means that the two sides next to each other are congruent. So our theorems for today state that, first of all, if a trapezoid is isosceles, then each pair of base angles is congruent. So we know that they're congruent. So angle A is congruent to D, and angle B is congruent to angle C. Next, if a trapezoid has a pair of congruent legs, then it must be isosceles, oh, I'm sorry, if it's congruent base angles. So if the base angles are congruent to each other, then you know it has to be isosceles. And then finally, a trapezoid is isosceles if and only if the diagonals are also congruent. So a few properties that are special for the isosceles trapezoid. So all of these are with just the isosceles trapezoid. So in this diagram here, AB or AC is congruent to BD. So in example one, we're going to use properties of isosceles trapezoids. Uh, shelf fitting into a cupboard in the corner of a kitchen is an isosceles trapezoid. We know that angle K down here is 50 degrees. Well, if the base is down below it, KN and LM are the two bases, it means that angle K is going to be equal to angle N and angle L is going to be congruent to angle M. So we need to figure out what their measures are going to be. Well, the measure of angle K is 50 degrees, and therefore the measure of angle N is also 50 degrees because base angles are congruent. 
then we need to find angles L and M. So if you think about this trapezoid, it is a pair of parallel lines that are cut by these transversals. And in the last unit, we talked about angles being formed on the same side, which could be same side interior angles, and those are supplementary. So the measure of angle L is 180 minus 50 because they are consecutive interior angles or same side interior angles is fine too. And they are supplementary. So then the measure of angle M, well, the measure of angle M and L have to be the same. So the measure of angle M is also going to be 130 degrees because it is a base angle with angle L. So to find the measures of angle C, A, and D, go ahead and pause the video. And then when you unpause, I will go through this one as well. So to find the measure of each of the missing angles here, the measure of angle B we know is 135. Therefore, we know that the measure of angle C is 135 degrees, okay, because it is a base angle with angle B. So that means that the measure of angle A is supplementary, which is 45 degrees, and the measure of angle D is also 45 degrees, okay? Now, the mid-segment theorem for trapezoid states that the mid-segment of a trapezoid is parallel to each base and its length is half the sum of the lengths of the bases. What does it mean? Okay, so you have a trapezoid because you have a pair of parallel sides, exactly one pair. So what happens is your mid-segment, and here it's MN, it's connecting the midpoint of each leg together, and it's also going to be parallel to the two bases. So MN is parallel to both AB and CD, and so to find MN, we're going to take half of the sum of AB plus CD, or if you prefer, AB plus CD divided by 2, which means an average. It's the average of the bases. So in the diagram, we're going to go ahead and find MN. And once again, it's the average of the bases. So the bases in this case are 16 and 9, and we're going to divide that by 2, which is 12 and a half. And we always want to make sure that we label if we're given a label in our given problem. So we want to find MN in the trapezoid for the first U try now. Only you try now. Go ahead and pause the video. All right, so for this one, once again, we are going to take the average 12 plus 30, divide it by 2. 42 divided by 2 is 21, and our answer should be in feet. So, our final theorems today. If a quadrilateral is a kite, then diagonals are perpendicular. And that's the same as in a rhombus. In a rhombus, we had perpendicular diagonals also. So in this case, AC is perpendicular to BD. If a quadrilateral is a kite, then exactly one pair of opposite angles are congruent. So in this one, angle A is congruent to angle C. 
However, angle B is not congruent to angle D, okay? C and A are between the non-congruent sides, okay? So that means that C and A are the only pair of congruent angles. So we want to find the measure of angle T in this kite. Now you can see a couple things in this diagram. First of all, angle Q and angle S are not congruent. One is 70 and one is 88. Therefore, if this pair of opposite angles is not congruent, that means that T and R must be congruent. We know that the interior angle sum of a quadrilateral is 360. And 360 degrees is what the four angles here will add up to. But what are the variables for T and R? It's whatever you want to give it. You can call it X, you can call it Y. So X plus X plus 70 plus 88 will equal 360. So X plus X gives us 2X. 70 and 88 is 158 equal to 360. And so we solve by subtraction. And we get 202. So our X value is 101. Each of those angles, the measure of angle T, will be 101 degrees. And remember, you look back up, make sure you're answering. It said to find the measure of angle T in that kite. All right, so go ahead and do this U train now. So to find the measure of angle G in this diagram, you know that one pair of opposite angles in a kite are congruent. So you know that J and H are not those congruent angles. Therefore, we need to find the measure of angle G, which we know is congruent to I. So we'll go ahead and we'll subtract, or we'll add everything up to 360, because 360 is the sum of the angles, interior angles, in a quadrilateral. So it'll be 85 plus 75 plus x and x. So 360 will equal 160 plus 2x. 2x equals 200, so x equals 100. And so the measure of angle G is 100 degrees. All right, and so one last example. We want to graph this quadrilateral and de determine if it is a kite or a trapezoid. Well, we need to first start by graphing. Notice again, units of 2. So negative 2, 9 is our P. Negative 2, 1 is our Q. Negative 5, 5 is our R. And negative 5, 7 is our S. All right, so what does it look like? You first start by evaluating what does it look like. Well, it looks like a trapezoid. Why does it look like a trapezoid? Because it looks like we have a pair here and here of parallel sides. So how do we check that sides are parallel? We check slope. Okay, so we want to find the slope of SR, and we want to find the slope of PQ. Okay, well, any time that you have only a vertical line with no run, okay, so it's just rising, not running, that's when our slope is undefined. Similarly, for PQ, it is also a vertical line, so the slope is also undefined. 
Okay, so because we have exactly one pair of parallel sides it is a trapezoid. So that is it for today. Go ahead and make sure you bring your notes to class tomorrow. We are going to review this in this uh, material and do an activity with it.